everyone uh, today we have organized special workshop for the uh, betterment in the research so topic for the uh, today's webinar is plagiarism plagiarism in the research plagiarism forms very important uh, thing uh, plagiarism is very important when you are uh, trying to publish your research and because of plagiarism sometimes it may happen that uh, the research will not get published so plagiarism is very important thing to be considered from the beginning of our uh, research project so to enlighten on this topic today we have our eminent speaker dr neha shah with us dr neha shah ma'am is uh, in charge principal in uh sdv college of physiotherapy amdavar and madam will enlighten us on the plagiarism how we can avoid plagiarism in the uh, research and uh, how we can check or correct the plagiarism if it happens so over to you nehal madam bhavna ma'am will also introduce nehal madam okay so uh, it gives immense pleasure to invite and introduce uh, dr nehal shah ma'am who is not just a professional but a very good friend of mine and thank you so much ma'am for accepting our invitation on just one message not even a call for uh, enlightening all the masters as well as the phd students or those who are involved into research and research publication the topic is so much into need of a time because every time whenever the researchers who do who does research but when comes the time for publication or for phd it is time for a submission of thesis or dissertation uh, the plagiarism comes in between as a uh, as a very vast barrier for them uh, and uh, at last the researcher struggles a lot to manage it so uh, this webinar would gives insight of how to manage it from the beginning so that it goes smooth with the publication or with the submission so thank you so much for taking such a unique topic for our webinar and i'm sure all the viewers of this webinar would get benefited for their research work in future thank you so much ma'am and it's really an immense pleasure from me for me and i'm really full from whole uh, the uh, faculty of physiotherapy parul institute of physiotherapy and parul university um, to have uh, you uh, on our view thank you uh am i audible yes ma'am because somehow i don't know there is some problem and i'm not able to on my camera okay so i guess but it should be fine if i'm audible well you can on from the other camera if it is possible then later on you can switch it Offered. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, yeah, plagiarism is something which needs a lot of attention from our side. And it is, I guess, I'm audible, or you can just give me some time so that I just, I can switch on to my uh, this data. You are audible. I'm audible, right? So, I think not wasting much of the time, we we straight away start with the topic. and first of all thank you bhavna ma'am for uh, inviting me uh, and you know letting me talk about plagiarism <laughs> it's not always that people would want to hear on it so uh, thank you so much for giving me an invite and yeah i'll try my level best to make everyone clear about plagiarism and what we can do to avoid it right so not wasting much of the time let me start with the presentation
Is my screen visible properly? No, ma'am. Yeah? No, no, ma'am. The same problem again, I guess. So I already started the screen share. Ma'am, switch it off and back to uh, meet and then you can reshare it again. I guess I need to disconnect and connect again. Just give me a second. I'll be back. Anyway, don't worry. Okay. So now can you see? Yes, madam. Okay. Yes, madam. Now perfect. Right. Perfect. Yeah. So let us start understanding what is plagiarism in research. So we all know that research is a growing industry. And if you see people, even people around us, everyone is running after research. Madam, I want to publish. Madam, I want to do a research. And so as per the recent data, there are more than 7.1 million researchers in this world. And of course, there is a fierce competition between them. And there are almost 25,000 uh, registered journals across the globe. So you can understand how vast this industry is of late. Now, plagiarism comes from a Latin word, plagiaris, which means a kidnapper who abducts the child, which means it is kidnapping, kidnapping. So here we are kidnapping somebody's creation, somebody's words, somebody's ideas. The word plagiarism entered the Oxford Dictionary in 1621. And as per the Britannica Encyclopedia, it is the act of taking writing of another person and passing them off as one's own. You know, many times we do this so very casually that if, if we get if, if we have come to know about something of course we have come to know through some of our friends but when we present in front of others we say that see i have found this out we we just don't acknowledge the friend who has told us about that something right so we do it so very casually for everything this this happens the best example is the xerox books which are lying with us or in our library we, we just so easily because that original book is, you know, uh, costly. We just try to take a Xerox copy of those books, which means we are doing plagiarism because it is it is a form of plagiarism. We don't want to respect the person who has taken all the pain to write that book. As per the World Association of Medical Editors, WAME, it defines plagiarism as the use of others published and unpublished ideas or words. When we talk about these, we talk about intellectual property rights and without attribution or permission. Ideally, if we want to quote somebody's article, we should, you know, cite them. Or if we want to take their research and make it, uh, make something out of that research and make it our research, we need to take their permissions. But we don't do that and then we present them as new and original rather than derived from an existing source. Now, plagiarism in medical student is increasing and studies have shown that over 90% of medical students in their second year plagiarize when they are told to make an answers or essays or their assignments, they plagiarize. And one in this is as per the United States data and one in 20 medical residency applications contain plagiarism. Now, why this plagiarism? Because, you know, uh, we people feel that it is very easy to write a paper or to make a research paper. So we have a uh, misbelief that if if we will take some paragraphs from a research but, you know, we, we take two, three research, we just do copy paste, copy paste, and we can make our whole article. 
but this is not right this is a misbelief and we may get caught by the editors of the journals if we have gone to some good journal and to an extent that there can be some actions taken on us or maybe they can even retract our uh, the, uh, article right so please stop don't do this copy paste business now what happens is we all belong to a lazy class of people and we always fail in time management and we are always overburdened with so many other things that we have got poor time management we will always because we want to publish or there is a deadline which we have to follow like if you are doing dissertations you always you will always have a deadline and you will fall behind only and so you will always write under stress immature writing skills every person thinks that he or she can write well just because you have that degree of mpt or phd you can write well but no it is not right many of us need to learn you know scientific writing is a skill which we need to develop so this is because of immature writing skill many people have a wrong intention you know they want to go with shortcuts and so it is their intention to plagiarize so that their things can happen very fast and of course pressure to publish for promotions majority of the colleges majority of the academic institute they require few good publications from their faculties to promote them so the 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 faculties are always under stress they are always you know overburdened with a lot of things and so they resort to plagiarism and as a result of all this adding to that there is a freely available lot of material on internet so you have a pressure you don't have time you don't have writing skill and everything is readily available on internet why not copy paste but because of all this there is a immense increase in plagiarism there is something which is called plagiarism of ideas which means that using the same idea thought or invention of someone and present it as one's own without proper acknowledgement which means that say one of our friend has got some idea and uh, by by chance you you over, you hear that now you want to work on the same idea what you do you take away his idea but you never uh, acknowledge him or her in your work and that is known as plagiarism of ideas the best example is somebody when is preparing for seminars or conferences the authors will pick up a lot of material from all across internet and textbooks and if when that is not acknowledged properly i mean if i don't acknowledge the person who has given me this idea this is known as plagiarism of ideas many times um, if if there are pg students listening to this uh, you all prepare for your dissertations and many times what you do you just pick up a readily available uh, topic many universities have got online uh, dissertations uh, there itself from the previous batches so what they do pick up something which is older than 5 years so that nobody will realize that this is a plagiarized material or many of us think about the mother article the father article you know when you have a mother article and father article and then you 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 do the same thing from that article it is plagiarism right articles are for your reference but you need to have your own idea and own topic not merely copying and pasting it from somewhere and if we ask the question that the same research was there then why did you do it and so conveniently a student answers that this is for european population i want to see its effect in indian population according to me that is an excuse when you are borrowing same so please refrain from having your mother and father articles rather have your own ideas for research this is a serious offense something which is called global plagiarism which means submitting entire work done by somebody which means you may tell your friend that i don't know how to write so please write me a paper 
and your friend writes it out for me maybe with money maybe without money but when it is which means that you have at least not done it so you don't have that right to be called as a first author or the second author of that article so when you do this this is known as global plagiarism plagiarism of text or direct plagiarism in another word it is copy and paste plagiarism now what happens is you copy a part say you copy a paragraph or few sentences from an article and then you paste it in your article you don't uh, you don't uh, super you don't cite the reference or you don't even put it in quotation so whenever you want to copy and paste please put it in quotation marks so that the reader will understand that this is not your own sentence but you have taken it from somewhere because you feel this sentence is apt for your material so without that quotation mark or without citing the reference if you are copying and pasting something blindly it is known as plagiarism of text and it attributes mainly due to readily available sources on internet there is something which is called mosaic plagiarism if you know mosaic mosaic are small tiles and they are you know uh, uh, arranged haphazardly which means that what you do is you borrow the ideas and opinion from an original source and a few words or phrases without crediting the original authors say for example you want to write a c and d in your sentence you want to write a c and d in your sentence and from somewhere you have come across b and e so what you will do is you will write a b c d e which means that somewhere in between your ideas you will put somebody else's words and then you don't credit that author right so that kind of a plagiarism is known as mosaic plagiarism it intervenes his or her own ideas and opinions with those of the original author creating a confused plagiarized mass so you use various phrases passages you know i articles ideas whatever and you make a patchwork in which two two or three words you will have your own two or three words will be from that source article then again two or three words from some other source article and the result is a completely new piece of text the words and ideas are not original right so you will make a new sentence but it is not your original work slightly rephrasing passages while keeping many of the same words and structures as original since you know english you can just you know uh, reframe the few words and something like that this kind of plagiarism requires a little more effort and is more insidious than just copying and pasting from a source and when the referencing is proper now you do it it is fine you are making a mosaic out of it you do it there is no problem in it but you need to acknowledge the source you need to cite the reference from which you have taken those words right so when the referencing is proper and when quotation marks are adequately used it is clear which of the words are by the author and which comes from a different source so most important cite that particular reference right and mosaic plagiarism is very common people you know people are good in english and they they can readily do this kind of mosaic work right so say here this is the original source and these are the this red are the things that are taken so if you look at this sentence this is a mosaic sentence so this is author sentence this is again taken uh, these words are taken again author has written his or her thing and then taken this so this is a mosaic now when you don't cite here the reference and when you don't cite here the reference this makes a mosaic plagiarism there is something which is called verbatim plagiarism which is directly copy a text from the source and paste it without attribution the structure and majority of the words are same as original few words are changed or deleted or many times smart people make it 
you know uh, if the sentence is in active tense somebody would the smarter uh, english people will convert it into passive tense so passive tense so that you know the meaning remains the same the words are different and this kind of plagiarism is known as verbatim plagiarism to use an author's exact words once again i'm repeating this if you want to use author's exact words you need to quote the original source by putting the copied text in quotation marks and including that in in text citation understood which means that you have to put it into into inverted commas and italics in your typing and then you have to cite that article from where you have taken this sentence then and then only it is not a plagiarism otherwise it would account for a verbatim plagiarism say for example if you look here this is the word words that you want to use some change is done but this will be plagiarism and if you cite something like this it does not become plagiarism right so citing the reference putting it in quotations is very very important paraphrase very very common what people do there is an original idea from the author then you change the few words and put up with such changes as your own idea without proper referencing and majority of us when we sit for scientific writing we do a lot of paraphrasing right like see if you see here this sentence says that progress has been slower than was anticipated and when it was paraphrased it is progress in the area has not been as rapid as expected right so a few words here and there and this kind of plagiarism is known as paraphrasing and we should avoid paraphrasing right now there is something which is called self plagiarism which means stealing your own work say you have some uh, paper in the past you have written some paper in the past and now you want to take some material from that paper and make a new one which means that there you have to cite your own work right so this kind of a plagiarism is known as self plagiarism and self plagiarism is divided into four parts du uh, four different types duplicate publication augmented publication segmented publication and text recycling so these are four different types of self plagiarism an overlap of more than one third of the material between the two articles is not permitted it will be considered as plagiarism which means that from your article a if you want to write an article b not more than one third of the material is permitted and this is as per wames ethics committee so you have to be very very careful regarding this coming to duplicate or redundant publication it is the same article submitted in two different journals in few days gap you know what majority of us do is say we have given one article in one particular journal and we wait for some time we, we uh, say maybe we wait for a week or 10 days and we feel that the journal is not responding without talking to the original uh, journal we power we we submit this the same article in another journal now what happens is what if by chance both the journals accept it and both the journals publish it then it becomes duplicate or redundant publication right and as per pubmed search report duplicate publication in february 2011 which means 10 years back they found 957 search articles i am sure these this count is going to be much more in recent times in case both the journals have published this article the article that was published later has to be retracted right or national library of medicine reserves the right this this uh, national library of medicine 
can either remove this article from both the journals without notification to the author so it actually depends on L nlm uh, to whether consider one article or to uh, you know uh, retract both the articles with or without notification to the author so this is the power that national library of medicine has with himself so in future say if you are waiting for quite some time the second the first journal is not responding to you before submitting it to another journal please write to the first journal don't just submit it in another journal because this is an offense an editor can take action as per copa guidelines now there are different forms of duplicate publications many times authors are so smart what they will do is they will change the order of the authorship so in one article i will be first author in another article somebody else will be first author and i will be second author so this also becomes a type of duplicate publication the the author would take the same study sample control data or some of the study outcomes and may or may not say you have a study in which you have four outcome measures what will the author do author will take two uh, two two, art, uh, two outcomes in one paper and then author will publish another paper in which all the four outcomes are there so these two outcomes become a duplicate publication right so this again becomes plagiarism use of same tables or figures that may have appeared in previous publication so again coming to the previous example say you had group a and group b and you had four outcome measures in your entire study of which you have taken uh, you have published a paper with only two outcomes right and you have published another paper with all the four outcomes so now what will happen the tables and figures containing those previous two uh, outcomes will be repeated in the or in in the second article and so this again becomes the duplicate publication right salami slicing is also one of the types of duplicate publications we'll come to salami slicing later on right now there are a uh, many authors who wish to publish an article in two languages if you have seen uh, you will see some articles which are there in french language german language european countries do this a lot right but so if they have published one article in one language and now they want to transform it into english or they want to transform it into local language which means that that they will have to follow uniform requirement issued by international committee of medical journal as editors icmje so they have formed criteria whenever a person wants to publish one same article in two different languages these criteria are to be strictly followed then they have to mention the intentions clearly to the editors of both the journals the local language journal and the english language journal the editors of both the journals should agree for this and most importantly they will have to cite the first article aptly which means that say i have one article written in english and i want to convert it into french i will have to cite that english article in the french form of articles right so this is when you are publishing an article in two different languages now what happens is whenever you have dupl duplicate publications there are a lot of ethical issues involved there is wastage of resources when a journal is accepting one article for publication and if it is this kind of a duplicate publications mind well because journal wanted to publish your article journal has re rejected or delayed publication of some other article and this is ethically morally and by all means incorrect another thing is when somebody does a meta analysis of these kind of things this will give erroneous meta meta analysis uh, data 
and it will distort the evidence base of clinical decision making which means that we are making we we are doing something wrong by publishing this kind of a data there is something which is called augmented publication which means that we are also very smart we we people are actually very smart what we do is we change the title our study is there say we have a study on four outcomes right what we do is we change the title we change the objectives or we just modify the objectives then we try to recalculate the uh, results in one article we may have found out the p value in another article we will not find out p value we will just go with the effect size estimation so we make these kind of changes and publish this article again with a changed uh, title change objective and changed uh, result and but with the same data or with the same population right so this or what we will do is we will add data to the previously published work i'll give you one very good example i had a student who did pg under me so uh, during her pg we had two group group a versus group b studying something on trapezoidis say now then she passed out and then she went somewhere for work and then she what she did was she she took one whole group and with some another thing or a control group or something like that and then she published the data again with the three groups she published it once with two groups she published it at another time with three groups which means that the data of two groups remain the same she added one group she made some changes here and there in the statistics and objectives and she published it again this kind of publication is known as augmented publication plagiarism detection softwares usually do not pick it up because the words will be different right it will pick up only if the verbs or verbatim remains the same the editor may consider it for publication in three situations if number 1 author cites his previous work number 2 if the methods cannot be written in any other form and number 3 if author clearly states that new manuscript contains data from previous publication if this is mentioned along with the article then it does not become a plagiarism this is a technical plagiarism and is not considered with same strictness as the other plagiarism now comes salami slices or segmented publication <laughs> salami slicing means slicing your own entire research into parts right splitting of data derived from a single research idea into multiple small publishable units or slices salami slicing is ethically incorrect it can lead to a distortion of literature as it seems that data presented in each salami slice is derived from a different subject sample see when you are publishing a paper paper 1 and paper 2 it is assumed that the population for both the papers are different people the samples of both the articles are different but when you do salami slicing you are doing multiple things with the same population this is ethically incorrect salami slice papers are usually difficult to detect and pointed out by reviewers or readers the decision regarding such manuscript is again on editor's shoulder the author must be asked to refer to his previously published work and explain reasonably the connection of segmented paper to his or her own published work which means that author definitely needs to be questioned and author has to uh, you know cite or uh, acknowledge the previous work as well now the example of salami slicing say somebody has done a study on comparison between you know uh, for some uh, comparison between short wave diathermy and ift in patients with knee pain this is an example so he must have given short wave diathermy to group a ift to group b and he must have kept one control group now if this person publishes two different studies 
one comparing short wave diathermy with control another comparing ift with control right so his title would be effectiveness of short wave diathermy in knee pain effectiveness of ift in knee pain now this is known as salami slicing because control group is same in both the studies so data derived from control group the mean vas the mean function the mean whatever outcomes were remains the same in both the uh, remains same in both the published work so this becomes salami slicing and this should not be done i have seen many post graduate students doing this kind of salami slicing hold on don't do it this is an incorrect or unethical practice now what is not salami slicing if you say somebody is doing a study on finding grip strength in some population using some newly developed equipment so somebody has invented a equipment and now wants to find the grip strength in say uh, ra population he can publish two papers he will publish one paper describing that new equipment means finding out the reliability and validity etc of that new equipment and he can publish another paper on grip strength using that equipment so these kind of two papers if done this is not a salami slicing because the population the samples are not repeated whenever the samples are repeated into different papers it becomes salami slicing there is something which is called text recycling which means use of large portion of one's own published text in a new manuscript this is very easily detected by plagiarism software and it will be handled as per cope guidelines please don't do that now ugc has been very clear in uh, on april 2020 ugc has very clearly mentioned that self citations do not add any number to individuals citation index or h index and for promotions selections credit allocations award of research degrees self plagiarism work will not be considered this is as per ugc public notice now so now consensus and controversies in self plagiarism reader expects to read original articles and any kind of self plagiarism violates such expectations of the readers but then at the same time say you are writing somebody is writing a book on anatomy and physiology now there are certain facts which remain the facts so it is hard not to repeat the things in the future books right so now this is a controversy that reader wants something new this is the fact that the 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 factual things cannot be changed so in that case what can be done you have to seek permission for reproduction from the copyright holder every book has a copyright holder who is the publisher of the book you have to seek permission to repeat his or her, uh, her own things in your book cite the original book chapter or article from where you have taken that material so key is disclosure and transparency so it's not that you just cannot do it but importantly you have to disclose you have to take permission you have to be transparent enough and you have to acknowledge the right person cyber plagiarism most common copying or downloading in part or in their entirety articles or research papers and ideas from internet and not giving attribution many times we don't know we we read something on internet and we don't know who has written it right there are a lot of blogs wherein we don't know who has written it so when we copy and paste that into our article it becomes cyber plagiarism we very easily copy images from books and internet then we modify them for colors dimensions etc we transform them we uh, to make it look as per our needs using a lot of different technology we photoshop them this is known as plagiarism because images are a form of valid clinical data and hence all the norms of plagiarism apply to images also 
So you have to acknowledge from where you have taken this image in your references. Now, what happens? The consequences of plagiarism. As a student, if you are found doing plagiarism, you may have failing grades on assignments. You may have uh, even expulsion if you do it for a longer time. If a researcher does this kind of a thing, it is a loss to the credibility of the reader uh, of the researcher. There can be legal consequences. Somebody may file a suit against you if found, you know, taking something which has a copyright. And there may be, of course, it comes a lot to your prestige. If an employee in a corporate setup or a similar setting does plagiarism, they can also lose their jobs. So it's better not to do it. And this, when we do plagiarism, it is put it as a publication misconduct. And publication misconduct includes plagiarism, fabrication, falsification, inappropriate authorship, duplicate submission or multiple submissions, overlapping publications, and salami publications. So we should not be, I have heard somebody has, you know, put it, put a paper in a journal and someone else from some other part of the world. I, I came across one such, there was some, uh, uh, some doctor who had put a case study in a journal and uh, some, some person from Japan or somewhere, you know, approach the journal saying that this is the same case study that I have published in XYZ journal and this is plagiarized. Now just imagine the amount of uh, loss of credi credibility that this doctor would be having, right? So please avoid doing all these things. Now COPE, I kept on saying COPE, COPE. COPE is the Committee on Publication Ethics which was formed in 1997 by a group of medical journal editors. And they are concerned with publication misconduct. They have formed their guidelines to control this kind of misconduct. And their investigations and reports focus solely on whether the journals involved behave according to the COPE code of conduct. If the journals don't behave, they will take action against those journals. So plagiarism can be destructive to the reputation of the person, co-authors, journal reviewers, and editors. And of course, from the institute of the institute also to which this plagiarist person belongs to. There are several forms of sanctions that can be taken by the editor of that particular journal. And there are many examples where plagiarism has cost authors and writers to their entire career. So editors can have a lot of power, right from just writing it to the author to informing to the head of the institute regarding the plagiarism. The editors can refuse future submission from the author they can even refuse future submission from that institute. So imagine if somebody from your institute is doing this, even you will not be able to publish in that journal. Retraction and reporting to the counts, respective medical councils. Right. And this is the whenever any article is retracted, it remains like this on the online journal mode. So say if your name was here, this will remain. So if somebody reads this online, we'll see your name and retract it. So just imagine the prestige you lose in doing this kind of a thing, right? So with retraction, the article is not completely removed from the journal site or database. The title, author list, and their affiliations remain with the addition of the term retracted next to the article like this. This seriously damages the author's reputation, right? Rate of retraction has increased tenfold in last few decades. So there are certain softwares that are used to detect plagiarism. So before publishing, one should check, go for a plagiarism check and then publish the article, which is helpful for both students and experts it decreases the rate of plagiarism within institutions. 
but you should have the knowledge of plagiarism this is a tool that helps to find sources that contain text similar to the submitted work what they do is these softwares they have the entire database you put your uh, article for plagiarism check they will check with their entire database for the similarity so plagiarism detection software mainly checks detects the similarity index how much similar your article is with some other articles in their own database the percentage of overlap between the text submitted to the plagiarism detection and that in the original source material <clears throat> so basically these softwares detect the similarity index it scans their entire database to find out this kind of similarity and the allowed percentage is between 20 to 25% similarity with referencing right this similarity is compared with internet sources publications submitted paper which means internal memory of similarity detecting software and in computing similarity index what they exclude say if you have written somebody's copy paste in quotation mark as i said into inverted commas and it licks then that is excluded if you have <coughs> bibliography is well made right they don't go for uh, checking bibliography in uh, similarity index and if in a uh, article there are small similarity of 10 to 14 words which means less than 1% that is something which is excluded from the plagiarism check now as per ugc again they have issued public notice saying what all can be considered plagiarism and what all not and what is the punishment and ugc has gone for zero tolerance policy in the core area which means that the core area includes your abstract your summary of the article your hypothesis observation result conclusion and recommendations when you are writing this your plagiarism should be zero percentage in this core area so they have defined the core area and non core area it has to be zero percent plagiarism in core area and in non core areas they there are three levels of similarities similarities up to 10% is excluded similarities between 10 to 40% is level 1 40 to 60% is level 2 and above 60% similarity is level 3 you will get punishment depending on your level of similarity and what punishment you can get i request everyone to read it up on the ugc website but it begins from resubmitting your article to the cancellation of the phd registration of that particular student so this is penalty for student yet if a student is found doing this repetitive repetitively he will be expelled from the course and even his degree if at all his degree is it is found that he, he has done this after giving a degree his degree can also be taken back right and for the faculties or the staff again there are a lot of punishments which which range from uh, you know withholding one increment withholding two increments to losing a job or not permitting that person to publish any any articles for one year two year three years or permanently i request everyone to go to the ugc website and look for all these now how effective are these softwares to detect plagiarism? Softwares find out similarities. So they show similarity index, which means by how much percentage a research publication is similar to others. It may or may not be effective in detecting plagiarism, mind well. High similarity index does not confirm plagiarism and 0% similarity does not confirm that the publication is free from plagiarism right but most importantly never try to check plagiarism or similarities by using free internet sources many a times these
free internet sources become a source of plagiarism because when you put your article into these free sources it remains in their database and they can use it sometimes and you know take their own name in that so you became a you become a victim so please never try to check this using a free sources now how do you reduce the level of similarity index you should set a software on non repository i will come to it later on use your own language keep the sentences short use synonyms for most commonly used repeated words present the output summary of data analysis in your own language and self prepared tables don't just copy paste your spss or excel uh, tables make your own table showing the interpretations right just copying and pasting spss comes to plagiarism so report the tables the results everything in your own language right different softwares will give you different similarity index because every software has got their own database from which they will check your plagiarism these are some free softwares which are available these are the paid softwares that are available for similarity index checking now coming to this as i said when you are submitting your article for plagiarism check there is one option see if you can read here the file you are submitting will not be added to any repository repository means what the say today you have submitted this article in this and you have not clicked on non repository which means that now this article will remain in the database of this software after some time you will make the corrections because this must have said that there is more uh, similarity indexes more and so you will try to make some changes in the article and when you make the changes and then resubmit it when you resubmit it for a check that article will show 100% similarity because your trial original article is already stored by this software and now you are submitting this again with some changes so when you put this on non repository mode which means that you are checking plagiarism but this article will not be saved for the future considerations so very very important please make this change don't add this into repository or put your article in a non repository mode and most important to avoid plagiarism citation reference to a source abbreviated alpha numeric uh, expressions are there and you know that there are different citation styles and you have to cite as per the citations as asked by the journal or by your university but citation is you want to acknowledge somebody's work that you are trying to adopt to your work so citation have got several important purposes like uphold intellectual honesty attribute prior or unoriginal work and ideas to correct sources allow reader to determine independently whether the reference material supports the author's arguments in the claimed way and help the reader to gauge the strength and validity when when a reader knows that the cited articles are good index journal articles they will understand that you have done work in a good quality so there are different elements of citation like signal phrase citations you know we we write no according to this this at all something like uh, this has happened there is something which is known as in text citation or parenthetical citation like you have a sentence then and in the bracket it is written by something chen li 2020 right and you have bibliographic citation which is the citation which you do at the end of your article and there are citation style and whenever we are talking about citation style we are talking about citation style for the signal phrase for in text citation and even for bibliographic citation right different citation styles have different rules depending on the need of our journal and our university we have to use that same particular cite style 
the various styles that are available to us as medical researchers are APA citation, AMA citation, Vancouver, and Harvard. Right. So please, when you are citing your articles, please go through all these. I mean, the at least the ones that you need in your uh, journal or you need in your university and strictly follow them. Now, there is something which is known as Citation Manager, which is a software tool that helps you track off and cite sources as you go through. So the top 10 reference management softwares are Mendeley and No, Treat Cup Papers, etc. What they do is you write your, you put your articles, you, you write your uh, references, you put the reference citation site. This manager will change your reference into the citation style chosen by you. It will number also your, uh, you know, arrange it in the sequence as per your own article. So you should be using citation manager when you are writing your own article. It will make your work very easy. Copyright infringement and plagiarism. Now, you know that there are a lot of copyrighted material available, right? And copyright infringement is the use or production of copyright protected material without the permission of copyright holders, like books are copyrighted. Now, unless you cite the books or if you want to take some main content from the book, you need to take permission from the publisher. Copyright infringement means that the rights afforded to the copyright holder, such as exclusive use of work for a set period of time are being breached by a third party, right? So. Copyright infringement is grounded in law and there can be legal consequences. Plagiarism, on the other hand, is a harm that is grounded in ethics. So you can be pulled in court and may have financial issues or may have financial punishments. Even you can go behind the bars if you go for copyright infringement. There is no statutory prohibition against plagiarism. Instead, Plagiarism is governed by community laws and consequences are most likely to be professional comes to your prestige, your promotion and academic sections, etc. So to conclude, please see to it whether to use your own words, put your own ideas in a proper way. If you are taking someone else's material, please make sure you are acknowledging that person. If needed, you are taking permission also from that person. Always remember, don't copy paste, check for plagiarism. Plagiarism is a crime and please identify these thieves. No matter how hard you work, someone else is working harder. Keep this in mind. Thank you so much for listening to me patiently. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. It was really a very informative session and the uh, things which you have covered was very minute thing, which we miss many a times uh, as my mistake. But when it comes, it comes as a big mistake. So it was really a very informative session and I hope all have learned a lot because we have arranged it specifically for the PhD scholar. So they might have learned uh, many things from this uh, webinar. So thank you very much for imparting very good knowledge uh, with all the research scholars. Uh, and thank you for accepting invitation on behalf of Parul University, Parul Institute of Physiotherapy, uh, and accepting our invitation and providing all the PhD scholars with uh, vast knowledge, which will be definitely helpful for them. So once again, thank you very much, Madam. Thank you so much for listening to me patiently for this whole hour. It, it was really very appreciable PPT. Like uh, the topic is quite boring, but you have made the PPT in very interesting manner. That like for just watching what is next, we, we have to pay attention. Thank you so much. Very informative session. And the things like uh, as I am one of the PhD scholar, I can uh, correlate that how much it will be helpful for all the PhD scholars to avoid the plagiarism. So thank you very much, madam. It was really a very wonderful session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.